two weeks. Okay, is I'm going to be going on up Seymour Mountain, which is in North Vancouver, and I'm going to be sleeping in the snow. So I'm going to make a hole out in the snow. I'm going to rub, line it with a tarp. I'm going to string it up, and then I'm going to sleep. I'm going to put a tarp down or a piece of plastic onto the snow. I'm going to put down a blue foamy like this. Okay, the foamy is important. The foamy gives me insulation between the snow and this, which is called a baby sack. Okay, in reality, I really don't need it, but I'm going to use it, otherwise, too much moisture and condensation, that kind of stuff happens. Do not use air mattresses. Okay, we use thermarests. An air mattress, you have this kind of thing, you blow up an air mattress in the wintertime, the air freezes, it gets way too cold. You can't do it. Use a thermarest. Even with a thermarest, I use one of these under it. It gives me that much more warmth and comfort in the winter conditions and in spring. This is called a bivy set. Okay? This one's American. I have two other Canadian ones I use. Okay? You can sleep in this inside, your sleeping bag inside it. I guarantee you will be very, very warm. Okay? Any sleeping bag you buy. Bruce, what would you recommend is probably a good temperature when you're buying a bag Somebody that's starting out probably what, minus 10, minus 15 Celsius? I'd say minus 5 if minus you're getting five. a synthetic one. Otherwise, it's going to get sweaty when you go out in the sun. Uh, so, 0 to minus 5. And um, that's, that's a good way to go. If you find yourself going winter camping, get another bag, double bag yourself. And that's actually more effective than buying a winter bag that you might only use once or twice anyway. There you go. That's why this bag is about a minus 10. Okay? Now, what this what you can do with this bag, because now I've stuffed it inside a bivy sack, that's going to give me about another 5 degrees to keep you dry. If I wanted to, if I wanted to be a little bit more comfortable, I would take and go to Walmart, and for $20 you buy a felt liner or a fleece, a fleece liner, like this product. Fleece liner, stuff it down inside. That gives you another five degrees. But with the clothes that you're going to wear tomorrow, that are dry when they go in your bag. Because if you get into the sleeping bag and the clothes you've been out in the snow in, your perspiration, um, any snow you've got on yourself, is simply going to melt and then come back to haunt you with steam. And during the night, it's going to get wet, uh, cold and wet. And the moment you get water inside your sleeping bag system, you're going to start getting very, very uncomfortable. Very it's cold, got to be dry very to work. So. And you will freeze. <laughs> I've actually had, I've actually had, um, sorry, go ahead, Helen. So, quickly in a nutshell, this is a liner. This goes inside that other bag. If I want to go, which when I go winter camping, I'm going to take that sleeping inside this one. I'm going to put this inside Hallett, can you come here a moment? I'm going to put this liner in that bag. I'm then going to take that bag, this liner, and put it inside this. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take the whole thing and I'm going to put it inside this bivy set. Mm -hmm. I can sleep through a snowstorm in the Arctic and I guarantee you I will wake up in the morning and I won't be dead. No, it, it's very, very warm. That kind of that kind of system right there will guarantee you're going to be extremely warm, extremely healthy. That's what you want. Okay? So when you're looking at bags, like Bruce said, something that goes to minus five in our environment. If you want to be a little more comfortable, add a liner. If you want to be even more comfortable, get a bivy sack to put all of that system in. But it's crucial, and it really is crucial, that no moisture enters that system. Make sure your body is dry and free of sweat when you get in it. 
wet socks in, you just got out of your boots, take your socks off. In winter conditions, I recommend, if, if, especially with cubs and scouts, if I'm out, I recommend they change their socks at lunchtime because your feet sweat. And as soon as you get sweat inside that environment, the environment of your, of your footwear, right, it's going to get cold. I haven't changed the socks about midway through the day. Okay? Change them up. Put on fresh ones. You're going to avoid all kinds of problems. Okay? Perfect. Okay. Everybody got it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're finished with that section then with the sleeping bags. I can pack that up in a minute. You guys all have your ropes. Okay. Just a little fun. It's just the important thing. We finish first, you can take off. You can't finish. We finish first, you have to. Ah. This is good. Okay. So, what's the first knot we want to try today, Bruce? What do you think? Show him. What do you want to show him? Both hitch. Both hitch? Okay, you show them the I'll hold the cuff. You hold that piece, I'll get another one. Here, hang this way. Sorry? Oh. You're going to stick on? Okay, that's the thing. See if you can do that. Two ways of doing this. The, 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 uh, the simplest way, I think, um, I just want to make a little bit of a little bit is to take a loop, and then in the same direction, take another loop inside it. So what you end up with is two loops with one crossover. And then you can drop it over your pole and pull it tight. So it should look like that. So, um, what is it? Can you do it one more time, please? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? The other way of doing it, of course, and maybe do it on your arm, is put a loop over your wrist like that and then cross it with the second loop. And now take the free end and pass it under both of those loops. So it comes out under the cross. And then you should make the second loop. You only lack it once and you to go around twice. Can I make a suggestion? Can you guys like stand up? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Scouting is action. Get in close where you can see. Scouting Bruce, where, where are we going to use this kind of knot? Well, let's get, let's get it tied and then we'll... <laughs> but that's the... Yeah, that's the... That's the I know where you're going with it. That's good. <laughs> I want to spur on the conversation. All right. This is a, an excellent knot. Okay. Trust me, but once you've done it once, you, you'll never forget how. Um, and that's probably the easiest way. It's okay, so round your wrist, maybe hold the, and then form a cross. Okay, and then take that free end and tuck it just under the cross. Okay. You're going well, you're going fine. Okay. Okay. 
Bruce, can you yep. over here for a moment, please? Sure. Okay. So, we've done one twice, right? So, yeah, the second time, yeah. cross over. So, the second time, cross over. Okay, so just, we go down here, we go around, and over. Oh, okay. So, now they're crossed. And then you come. Oh, okay. Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's easier when you're using two times. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So one is then you kind of go over yourself on the outside. So you want to charge in the same direction. So it looks like Okay. The, the thing about knots too is we do a demonstration like this. Do keep, I think, so I'm afraid it's going to make a gift of these bits of string. Please do take them home and practice them. Because in the end, you really need to be able to do this. Um, and it's, it's one of the suggestions we make. You can almost make a game for it with all of you. Uh, and have them do it blindfold, you know, have them do it in the design, have them do it fast. It's, 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 a, it's a, a great way of making sure that you can almost do it exactly. Um, and especially if you're over playing, you know, like, it's really important to be able to put a reliable knot into a bit of rope. The, the way that I do it is a little bit different than his, but it's the same knot. It's, it's not, I, I make my loop, okay? and then I make another loop going the opposite way. Okay? And then I'm going to take this one and pull it through. And then Oh, I just do it differently. But the way that he's yeah. What you want is two backward circles. If this one circle goes this way, then the other circle goes this way. I get it. Oh, okay. That's it. Perfect. That, that's another way of doing it. You take those two circles and then you fold them. You've got the tradition. Okay, so across the thing, that's how I'm going to That's the trick. There you go. Now you have it. Now get another loop. There's two loops. I make two loops. I'm going to do that one as well. Oh, okay. Now you have it. Now? Hey, that's it. But this, in order to connect, Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, So you can't always do it that way, so it's part of the reason it's good to see two different things. That works great, as I said, if you have an exposed yeah. end. But it could be that you're working with If you have an end like this, then you can slide it off. But if you just got one big long piece like this, and there's no end to slide it off, you have to work around it. But it's just the way it is. Yeah. 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 So it's a uh, twist, a twist, and those two are exactly the same. But then you kind of tuck one behind the other, and then you knock them right there. And the same thing will happen if you do it on the same side. 
Sure. So over and then make a cross. Okay. You see how that happens? So the second turn around crosses over the first. But hold those two crossed and then just tuck the loose end under the under both of those pieces. And then they tighten up and do the correct thing. It's the same knot. And then here. Cross. And then. Uh, no, he, so you can you keep on keep going. Yeah. Yes, keep going. 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 So you have what he needs, he has what you need. So he can teach you. Okay. Get to it for the whole way. And he's got both of them, so he can teach everybody. Yay! Okay. I didn't get the one. Okay. Okay. I didn't kill him. I didn't hardly. Hard. Hard. Okay. You can do it earlier. It's just hard. I'm good. <laughs> What's called this type of knot? This type of knot. What's called it? Interesting. The same thing with this. Can you show me that again? Did I actually do that? Yeah, it is. That's what Jasmine does. Jasmine can show you. I guess three, three, two. Got it. This is um, it's versatile. This is called a bow line. And the fourth one is the clove pitch. This is clove pitch. I use it for macrame when I'm doing um, plant holders. Yeah. Yeah. You want to try, if you're moving, you're helping somebody move. Uh, big plan. So it doesn't fit in anything. You're going to try to move this part. And then you can unlock it, and here's your rope. It's so good. Just wait. I have a problem. There was a story. I guess everyone else has a problem. 
Yes. Can I get, get you to talk about that uh, voter that uh, did the Olympics? You can. I'm just finishing with Monty because he missed all the first talk about this, so I'm just quickly going over some of this with him. Somebody was asking about the purpose of, of rope. So I'm gonna, Scott Craig has a story, and I always forget the details, so I'll get him to talk okay. about okay. Um, what ropes can do for you. Last year, you remember when you left for here in Vancouver, okay? There's a building that, uh, this is one, that's what's swinging around so I can play with it. Um, one of the buildings is what we call and refer to in Vancouver and Lower Mainland as a heritage site, as a heritage building. Okay, so in other words, when you go into these buildings, you cannot put a screw in a wall, you can't hang anything on the walls with screws or nails. Okay? So this was actually chosen as one of the accommodation sites for, and the living room for the athletes that came for, for the Winter Games last year, right? One of the requirements that the contractor had to follow was he couldn't put any screws in anything, he couldn't use any nails, period. So he had to run wires for electrical for all the lighting. He had to put walls in and he had to hang everything. You know what he did? He hung everything and did it all with ropes and lashings. Do you know how he did it? Because in his youth, he was a scout. And his father is actually a Supreme Court judge here in British Columbia. That's how we know about the story. And he presented Jasmine with her medal last year. And he told the story. So in other words, an entire inside, like take this, a room that's ten times the size of this, the walls were all suspended from big heavy beams with ropes. Lighting, all the electrical, all the electrical fixtures, the chairs, everything. Nothing was screwed down or nailed down. It was all by lashing and tying with knots, with different sizes of rope, different types of string, lashing. It's all lashed together, everything. And so we're we talking about completely apart. taking a bare bones warehouse with nothing in it <clears throat> and turning it into a luxury living quarters for Olympic athletic villages, complete with sound systems, electrical, television, heat, everything, with no screws. No nails, nothing. Every picture, everything. Hung up. Just look around here and see how many holes you got in the wall. And that building was left in its original shape at the end of it. Okay. Oh, I got to Okay. You lashings and ropes are used not just out in the woods. It's for survival. You use them every day. You're tying your shoelaces with them. But that's just one knot. Imagine what you knew, what you can do with five knots. Right. These little sticks, okay, cool. They're, they're great little walking sticks, and I talked about them being a weapon. My, my daughter reminded me, you know, if you've you got a, a, a group of cubs with you, you've got five or six kids, and you're lost, and you're walking a trail, and somebody's getting tired, put them in the middle. Put a cub in the front, a cub in the butt, behind. They're holding on to, to that, that... They're all holding on. You're not going to lose anybody. Right? No visibility. Kids are tired. They're not paying attention. Adults are you tired. You can't see where you're going. <laughs> right? Somebody falls down and they're stuck 10 feet down. You can't reach them with this. What are you going to do? You got two people holding on to this. You tie off on this and you can go down and get them. It's more important to learn how to tie a rope than to. Uh, but a fire, <laughs> you know, um, the fire will keep you warm, but a rope, a rope might make the difference between life and death. A properly tied rope. Actually, the um, the start of the for a long time I didn't hike with a staff. I thought, well, oh, it's kind of um, um, a gadget, and I don't like having too many gadgets. And then I was on a, a hike with a couple of scouts, 
and uh, they, it was part of the program they were on. They were required to make, come up with two useful things on the trail. And they picked up some staffs and carved them. And coming down that trail, our trail had washed out, and it was basically a river where the, the trail was supposed to be. And going down through this river and uh, picking our way, the staff was absolutely invaluable. I've hiked them around since. Um, I like this one, it's very, very light. And it's um, just a, it used to be a, six, a 12 foot pole from the garden center. It's just bamboo. Um, uh, I like it because it's light. Um, and then I put, um, these are called clippings. Usually they're used to prevent the end of the rope from fraying. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a conventional whipping, which I use for the, um, that's the position where I like it when I'm walking. If I'm going downhill, or if I'm checking ahead in a, in a way when I'm wading a river, this is a French whipping, and it has a, a texture to it, which, which helps me give grip. And because it's hollow, um, what I've done is I've put my emergency kit in the top hole. I just cut the little hole out. So the plug is one garbage bag. If I lose my coat, if I lose my pack, if I lose anything, I'm just going to poke a couple of eye holes in this and put it over my head and sit down and wait for someone to come and get me. And then um, inside that, <laughs> in a tube, um, in here I've got uh, a, whole, a whole bunch of stuff. I've got some uh, silver paper, fish hooks, um, a stub of candle that I can use, and uh, some hurricane matches that can strike anywhere. I can use it to get a fire going. I've got some fishing line. And um, all of these things are hooks, here? and they're all in this. Wow. They're all in this tube, <laughs> which is waterproofed, and then uh, tied onto this little piece of cord, so I have access to it. Uh, when you when you say that the silver paper, you yeah. meant the um, the blanket, <coughs> tin foil. Yes, the blanket. The it would, like the this would this would. You could just... <coughs> use something like this. You have to fold it differently to get it in there. Yes. Or you can actually lash it. I've seen people who actually lash things to their stuff. I personally don't like that. Um, but what he is talking about is just ordinary tin foil, the stuff that you cook with. Yes, you are. Yes, <laughs> if the worst oh. comes to the worst, I can take the tin foil, I can make a cup from it, fill it with water, and then boil it over my candle to make sure it's purified. And um, the uh, whipping at the top is a very strong light cord. Um, I could find a couple of pieces of cedar if I needed to go hunting in the wilderness. If I needed food, I would use this as a bowstring. And then my backpack. <coughs> the frame is two arrows. Oh, okay. So um, this this really is my my complete survival system. Um, the padding in the backpack is a couple of gloves in case mm -hmm. the, the weather is turned cold. Um, and generally, the, um, the padding in my backpack is two sections of thermal mist. So I've got somewhere warm and dry I can sit, or I can spread them out and curl up, and then uh, sleep comfortably on them. Hopefully I haven't lost this. Um, and this is very similar to the Scott Craigles demonstrating, which is um, a, a, a fold-out mattress. Mm -hmm. I like that because it's lighter than the blue one and it's more comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and and you can't flip it. Uh, you can actually flip it like this, right? Yes. Uh, and then water. Um, I've generally got this along, which will have some, some uh, key water in it. And some tablets that I can use to, to purify water. Um, <coughs> one of the really important things to focus on uh, when you're in the outdoors is the thing that we refer to as the rule of three. And again, it's to help you survive. You know, so in a survival situation, you can last roughly, in British Columbia, poor weather conditions, three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, three weeks without food. Because a whole lot of people generally go into a, you know, if they're in a plane crash or something like that, or they're lost in the wilderness, the first thought is, well, what am I going to eat? And yet that really is the, the least of your worries. You must get dry and warm as quickly as possible. That is your first priority. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason why we learn things like the knots, so that you can use available materials to get a shelter together. And 
it, it actually turns into a good game. Um, we haven't covered the tent. Uh, every tent is a little different. When you get a group, though, it makes a great game. Spend an evening at a meeting, having a practice, put up the tent, put up the tent, put up the tent. Take it down again until they can do it very, very quickly without even thinking about it. And as I said, the, every tent has somewhat different instructions. But the uh, good game which you'll play at a jamboree, and if you, if you ever go to a jamboree, is the best one of all. Once the youth get really good at putting the tent up, blindfold them. They need to be able to do it in the dark. The day may come when you're, you know, however you're getting to the campsite, there's a traffic delay, mudslide, whatever. It's dark when you arrive. You've got to get everybody into shelter as quickly as possible, which is why being able to put up a tent with your eyes shut is a really, really good survival, survival skill. <laughs> um, and then you can spread out from there, and everybody's warm and dry, and now you can stop worrying about what you're doing. What you're doing. So the rule of three, very, very good one. They will teach you that if you went on a thing called the Conservation and Outdoor Recreation Exercise Program in, in uh, British Columbia. It's the thing that you have to do if you go for a hunting license or if you're going to, you know, if you're going to, uh, it's the first step towards being a gallant outfit. Um, one of the best things I brought away from the course was, was the rule of three. So um, it, it does, uh, as I said, it does help you focus. It does help you prioritize what you need to do when you get to a camp or then if you're going to survive the situation. Bruce, I, I know you have to make for two seconds. We are packing up our um, stuff. <coughs> I just have a question. Bruce is still here. He has more to do with you. So our <laughs> section, I, we have a, another commitment. Would you, scouting says, you bring what you want, what you need, and you take it back with you. I'm asking you if you would like me to take my wood with me, or I'm offering you the option of keeping it so that you A, have wood that you can um, identify, learn what <coughs> cedar is, learn what the willow is, learn to carve it, learn to build the fire, practice under safety, of course. Yeah. Would you like me to leave that, or should I take it with me? Well, guys, um, if you want to leave it, I'm happy to leave it for you so you can use it because I'm just going to be putting it back into the woods. Thank you. Okay? Thank you so much. And I'm sure you can find it. Thanks for asking. I will leave you with Craig and, sorry, with the go to Bruce and Scott Craig right now. And I'm going to start packing up our stuff. Okay? Where am I going? Let's do the trophy. Oh, sorry, the other sheep bag. Big bag. Do you need the staff? <laughs> no, it's packed with staff. Okay, so. Craig, so everybody got their rope? Where's your rope? Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere there. Did you lose it? Whose rope is. Because it's mine. Oh, then it's mine. There you go. Okay. You guys, you guys hang on to those. Stick them in your back pocket. That way you can practice. Because you are going to need to practice, right? You can't just. Do you want to show them the weight comparison between this sleeping bag and a fully packed pack? No, they can get that understanding later. Okay. Um, what I like to do, guys, and um, Bruce will agree with in some cases here, any of these poly ropes, like this, okay, um, you can knot the ends, but they're going to start to fray, like this. Especially your heavier line. I like spray a lot like this, okay? What I do to eliminate that is I either take a heat gun or I take a lighter and I, I singe the ends so it doesn't spray on you. Okay, it's just a little something that's going to help you in the long run. Are you going to add to that though? Please do that out of doors. Yes. Please do not breathe the fumes. Burning nylon, burning polypropylene, highly carcinogenic. Really, really bad for your health. And don't touch the ends right away, it'll burn you. That's also true. <laughs> the stuff is very, it'll very hot. It'll melt to your skin. But if you get it sort go. of hot, then kind of dab it against a rock or something like that so it forms a nice um, ball. And uh, again, you're working off the. The other way of doing it, and especially if you're working with uh, younger youth, uh, roll with pitch cushions like that. Just a couple of turns around the end, that will stop the stuff from falling. So, Bruce, show us what we're going to do. Show us what not we're going to do. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us.
Jasmine. We're going to do a thing called the, uh, the sheep bend. So we're going to start, so start by taking a leaf. And then we're going to lay the rope over it. I want to try to put the rope underneath it. Turn it over the top. Well, you can do it this way, too. Yeah, no, I have I've done it upside down as well. This seems, this seems easier for me. <coughs> go up this way, come around the back, and then the rabbit goes back down the hole. Like that. That's cheap. That's a scrubber. You can't get them easy. <laughs> right, so you want to go this way, right? <laughs> well, you can so like that, and then over, and then down through the hole. Yeah. So this is another method of tying a sheep bend, which is what he's doing, is going up through the hole. We come around the back like this. Now instead of going back down the hole, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to go through the top. I'm going to cut it off halfway, like that. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Did it work? <laughs> yeah, it worked. Then that's fine. Yeah, anyway, good. however it gets it. Let's see. Oh, no, that's a square knot. That's a square knot. That's a reef this is what you did. A, a reef knot. You did a reef. A reef is a through knot. the hole, around the back, <laughs> and then down the hole again, right? It's a square knot, like that. That's what you just did. I'm sorry. You have to excuse me, because I, I do this. Sometimes I need to slow down, and I go too yeah, fast. Yeah. Bruce is better, because he goes a little slower. I'm going to do this. I'm going to cheat, I think, because um, okay. it's probably better if I use two different color ropes. There you go. And this is um, a, watch. a knot that is used for joining two pieces of rope, where one piece of rope is of a different material, or more importantly, a different size from the other piece of rope. So do a double then. Well, I'll do that. In, I'll do that. Let's, let's, do, let's do the sequel first. That's right. So that, what's, what, what we're trying to do is achieve that kind of pattern. And then when we pull it tight, Grips nicely, and um, this this knot is important for multiple reasons. It's the introduction to a better knot. This this a lot of these knots used to work great back in the days when rope was all made of hemp or jute or a uh, sisal, and it was made from natural materials. A lot of these things gripped a lot better, and nowadays we're working with this sort of wonderful nylon and polypropylene stuff that's. An excellent rope, but it's slippery, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. And I'm not stone all this work. Yep. So this one is also a moderately ceremonial knot. By tradition, it's the knot that's used at the bottom of the Canadian flag. Right. So when the Canadian flag is placed on a on a flagstaff, there'll be a toggle at the top and a loop at the bottom of the flag. And this is the knot that's used to fasten the halyard to the loop at the bottom of the flag. So again, that's an, that's an important one for me. You know, Can I try industry. doing this thing? Please? I think you should. Sure. Yeah, yeah. it, it's, it's perhaps a little easier yeah. on the, uh, so the fact of the work. So first. <coughs> okay, well, don't, go, go, don't, don't go down first. Go, go, maybe go around first. Like this? No. <coughs> okay. Okay, so uh, I guess. <coughs> okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. That's much better. So I can put it under and cross over it, and then take this end and tuck it down. Well, that's it. Oh, oh. That's it. And, then you can... right. and eventually it locks up. Okay. Okay. So one. Okay. Mm -hmm. it like mm -hmm. this. Uh, you got it. Oh no, I'm oh, not mm -hmm. That was. I thought you were going to get that by the back, by the, by the upside <laughs> down. Other side. I thought it was going to work. It's doing it upside down. It's not going to work. That looks good. Now get that down through the big loop. No, down through the loop is fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. It's, it's deceptively simple, actually. That's part of the problem. That's it. Good. And then you put that tight and then you. I think you have one end short. No, that's that's that right. But it's, it's that that's the direction in which it locks. Okay, okay so perfect. And and do you, do you uh, tie another one after it? No. What we're going to show you is over time that may pull out is each, each like this knot here will progress to the next series, which this knot is turns into a double, and you can take it and turn one more time. Go through, and it's guaranteed going to hold. It will not slip off. 
That's the advanced course which we're going to do in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be gone and this will be here. Well, thanks a bunch. Yeah, I'll just show it to the right. Okay. I'll just explain to him in Arabic if you don't mind. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as well. I don't mind. Monkey explain it to him as Okay, so I can read it. Read it. I should give it to you. It doesn't mean you have to get from this. So I'm like, what is this? The the one I'm doing right now. I like it. Right. Yeah. I think you're getting into it. That's looking. That was in my pocket. Oh yeah. I'm. Yeah, I'm uh, nervous. بعدين تأخذ أول شيء تأكل سمش، بعدين تأخذ ثاني تحت، بعدين تأكل سمش فوق تسوي زي إكس كذا، صح؟ بعدين بس هذا هنا، بعدين تسحبها، تسحب تسحب تسوي زي كذا، أوبس، كذا، بعدين أشتغل، هل لازم يكون من من الجهة اللي تخليها مستقيم؟ بس أهم شيء ترسم. Why do you try it? Just cross. You have to be tied yeah, kind of because it's upside down. Pull the one in your. Yeah, pulling upside down. No, not both of them. Just, just the one in your right hand. There you go. See, it's just upside down. Yeah, you did it upside down. Watch, watch, watch him. Watch what he's doing. See? It's so simple, it's easy. And then down through the middle. Down through it. That's it. Take it through there. Pull it tight. Pull it tight that way. That's it. No. You see? And then that's it.